Happy Friday, everybody. We made it to the end of the week and welcome to our science lesson for today. Um, our science lesson, we're actually gonna kind of pivot and do something a little bit different for science. We're talking about community etiquette. In particular, we're talking about restaurant behaviors. Um, the ways in which we act at a restaurant. What are um, the expectations of when you go out to eat, whether it's at a sit down restaurant, a fast food restaurant, maybe you're just getting dessert from someplace. So we're talking about community-based instruction, how and what are the cool ways to act when we're, we're out and about with family at restaurants, okay? Maybe you're going with your friends or um, maybe you're going with your class to a restaurant, right? We've done quite a few field trips where we've gone to Castle Park, to Knott's Berry Farm, to John's Incredible Pizza Company, and there are restaurants at all of those locations. So let's let's hop right to it. What are restaurant behaviors? Well, restaurant behaviors, as you can see in this picture here, it's expectations of behavior at a restaurant. It's the behaviors or the actions that are expected of us when we go out to eat at a restaurant, which is a business that sells food. So some restaurant behaviors include waiting to be seated or helped, how to order from a menu, what it means to be polite to servers, eating in a clean manner with proper utensils, and tipping our waiter or waitresses. This is something that your parents will typically do when they go to pay for their food, um, for the food rather that you've bought or consumed, but it's something that you should keep in mind now that you're in high school. You know, if you go out with your friends, if you go out with your family, maybe you can start helping out and you can help determine how much to tip the waiter or waitress. Cool? So let's keep going and we're going to go over each of these behaviors I've discussed. Well, the first thing to know is that the way you act at a restaurant is really going to depend on what kind of establishment are you eating at. Are you going to a nice sit down restaurant where you eat your meal on the premises of the business? Or are you going to a fast food restaurant where chances are you're gonna go through the drive through or if you do eat there, it's quick. You sit down, you grab your food and then you leave, okay? So the way that we act really depends on the restaurant that we're going to. So either way, whenever you go to a restaurant, you need to be able to read a menu. A menu lists the different food items that a restaurant has available. And when we read a menu, we have to be able to find what time certain foods are available. So um, according to this menu at McDonald's, I see some breakfast items and I see some lunch items. Generally speaking, at fast food places, a lot of them now are offering breakfast all day, but they might have stipulations or um, restrictions on what foods are being sold, okay? And so it's important to be able to read the menu to know what they are selling, when they are selling it. If you go to a sit-down restaurant, they will have their menu organized according to the time of day. So they'll have a breakfast section between the hours of when they open to roughly around 11 o'clock, maybe 11.30. There's a lunch section, which normally takes place from 11.30 onwards till about 4.30. And then there's a dinner section. It's the food that's served from five until closing. So we need to be able to find out what foods are available and when, because we can't always order what we want. Sometimes restaurants have restrictions. And then you also, probably most important of all, it details how much the food costs, okay? We need to make sure that we have enough money to purchase the food that we want because it's okay to order the food, but if you don't have enough money at the end of service, if you're at a fast food restaurant, they're either not going to give you your order or if you go to a sit down restaurant, they might you might get in trouble if you don't have enough money to pay for your meal. So it's really important to look at the menu and purchase things that are within your budget, that are um, within your ability to buy. Make sure you have enough cash or money on your credit or debit card, okay? And the last thing when you're reading a menu, you wanna look for the dietary restrictions. Some of us have special diets or we don't eat certain things. And so it's helpful to look at a menu and also to ask a worker, a staff member or a waiter or waitress, what 
the options are for people who don't eat meat, they're called vegetarians. For people who are diabetic and need sugar-free alternatives, maybe you have an allergy, so you need to read a menu to see what is in the food that you are buying, okay? So let's say you're allergic to peanuts. You're probably not going to want to order anything that has peanuts in it, okay? So just being very mindful of reading a menu to find the time that foods are available, how much the food costs, and what is in the food that you are consuming so that you do not violate your dietary restrictions and um, potentially have an allergic reaction or feel sick afterwards. Now, you've read the menu, you know what you wanna order. How do you order the food? How do you interact with staff? It's important to be very polite to others at a restaurant or to be respectful and considerate of the people working to get our food to us. So when we're polite, we're saying words like please and thank you when we order or interact with staff. This also means, being polite means sitting calmly and waiting for food to arrive. Um, you might ask the waiter or waitress, excuse me, when will my order be ready? That's a polite way to check on your meal. We don't just get mad and yell out, where's my food? I'm so hungry, or bang our fists. We have to act in a polite and respectable manner. All right, you're with your family. You don't want to embarrass them. You don't want to upset other people. So there's a, a way to do things and the way that we're going to do it, it's the polite way. Yeah. And it's really important to be mindful of other people around us. So if we're talking too loud, we can disturb others' meals. We want to make sure that the conversations that we're having aren't um, conversations that need to be held at home because you're at a restaurant, you're in a public setting, so you want to talk about cool public things um, and not things that might make others uncomfortable or your own family uncomfortable for that matter. So we got to be polite. Another thing, we need to eat in a calm and cleanly manner. Um, not only are you sitting down when you are eating, but you are using your napkin. You might want to place your napkin in your lap or on your shirt so that you do not spill things on your clothing. Um, and it's really important to be mindful of what the different utensils are when we eat. So this picture right here has a lot of utensils. Are you going to use half of these? Probably not, but it's good to know what they are. That way, if you see multiple forks at a table, you know, oh, one is for dinner and one is for salad. So I'm going to go over what all of these are and I'll tell you the ones that you're most likely to encounter. So there is a bouillon spoon. This is for soups. A teaspoon. This is used to grab small dollops of, let's say, condiments, uh, um, different things around the table like sugar. You have an actual teaspoon. So this is for mixing things into your drink, such as if you took, use the teaspoon to get sugar in your drink, you'd use this teaspoon, the tallest, longest one, to actually mix the sugar in because obviously the smaller teaspoon isn't going to probably fit the length of your uh, drink container. You have here a butter knife. This is used for getting and spreading butter, perhaps on rolls or bread. You have a dinner knife. Your dinner knife is used to cut um, some things into smaller pieces in order to be consumed. You might actually have a steak knife. A steak knife is so that you can cut into cuts of meat. The dinner knife is not really for cutting into meat. It's more like cutting into, say, pasta or vegetables, maybe even chicken sometimes if you don't have a steak knife available. So you'll probably have a dinner knife at your table setting. A dinner fork is the primary fork that you eat with. It's what you eat the entree with. That's a dinner fork. It's the longest of the three. A salad fork is for your appetizer, in which case you'll most likely be eating a salad. It is smaller than a dinner fork and it's usually placed to the right of the dinner fork. The last one is a relish fork. This is also used to get condiments out of their containers. Let's say you're using a certain type of thicker dressing or paste, you'd use the relish fork to get it out. So 
The things that you're most likely to see at your dinner table, you might have a bouillon or soup spoon. You'll have a teaspoon. You'll have a dinner knife. And you'll have a dinner fork. Okay? You might have a butter knife, depending on what kind of restaurant you go to. You will only find these in sit-down restaurants. When you go to a fast food restaurant, they will typically have pre-packaged spoon, fork, and knife that you can use to eat your meal. Most places won't really have this unless you go to, let's say, um, Chipotle, or if you go to Waba Grill, then they'll have forks for you because that type of food isn't meant to be eaten with your hands. It's meant to be eaten with the assistance of a utensil. All right. When you go to pay your bill at a fast food re or sorry, at a sit down restaurant, you also want to include a tip. A tip is for the restaurant waiters and waitresses who bring out your food to you and who make sure that you have enough drinks, make sure that you have condiments if you need, um, for example, ranch or ketchup. They make sure that your meal experience is overall positive. So we tip them to show our appreciation for them going above and beyond, for them doing their, their job. So restaurant tipping guidelines, you want to tip 15 to 20 percent of the pre-tax bill before taxes. So um, if you actually look at what the tax is for your uh, your purchase, you can also just double the tax. That's what Miss Morris personally does. Since tax is about 8.75%, if you double it, it's over 15. It's right in that sweet spot. Um, nowadays, you'll probably want to tip people 20% just because times are hard and a lot of people are, are kind of putting themselves at risk in order to service our meals. So tipping 20% is a kind way to say thank you to the waiters and waitresses who help take care of your meal. Now, please note, it is not necessary to tip when you pick up your own food at a takeout restaurant or fast food restaurant. But if you receive some service, let's say that the cashier was really kind to you when you go to Starbucks or um, when you went to Chipotle, they did a really good job putting together your order. It is also kind to leave a one to two dollar tip. And it's usually about 10 percent of your purchase. Right. Because. When you go to fast food restaurants, chances are you're not spending as much as you would at a sit down restaurant. So leaving them in their tip jar, one to two dollars is a kind way to say thank you. I appreciate your hard work. OK, so the tip is in addition to the actual cost of your meal. Please note that these are separate and um, I'll go over the examples. This is a tip jar. You'll find this in places like Starbucks, Chipotle. I'm not sure that McDonald's or other places have them. I know that they have donation boxes, but they're not tip jars. Sometimes you might leave a cash tip. So instead of um, if you're paying with cash or card, you might choose to leave money, an actual you know, dollar bill or $5 bill or what have you for the waiter or waitress. And if you are paying with your credit or debit card, you might leave an electronic tip. OK, an electronic tip is um, it'll get taken out of your bank account in addition to the total cost of the meal. And so what you do is you write down how much you want to tip them. You add that to your cost and then that is the total amount you'll be charged on your credit card. So unfortunately, what is listed here, $41.91, that was not the tip. That should have been the total. The tip was $3.82. And then you would add those two amounts to find the ultimate amount that you would be paying for on your credit card. Okay? Oh, I guess this person actually did leave $41.91, such that their total was $83.82. Wow. Very kind of them to do that. They must have had a really, really good service. So... That is all I have for restaurant behaviors. In class, we're going to discuss more about cool ways to act at a restaurant versus not cool ways. And I will see you guys then. Take care and I hope that this is helpful for the next time you go out to eat with your family.